apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. We'll deep dive into our feelings and our real talk about Stay tuned because it's about to get real. It could be your last chance to see one occur for two decades. As the next time, one will be invisible over the continental US. Who's in 84? There are one police in the hospital that can press the door for they mix with oxygen and nitrogen. Briefly. Welcome back to the show. I hope you enjoyed that break as much as we always do. Oh, we always love those we breaks. We always fight during the breaks, don't we? Yeah, we always throw hands, just go. Yeah. That's All why right. Bloody nose. Uh, that, okay. Let's get ready for our next segment now, shall we? So, for this new segment, Austin goes out into Murano Campus Center asking a really important question. Now, unfortunately, I could not be there for this segment as I was sick, but we had a special guest help out. Who was that special guest? Well, let's find out. You were sick. Hello, sir. Uh, I just got a quick question. All right, we got two questions here. So, would you rather every time you cheat, you have to eat an entire pumpkin whole, or every time you lie, your pants just spontaneously combust on fire? What's your answer? I think the pants on fire, just because I think it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. Like, in the, like you have to eat an entire pumpkin whole, stem and all. It's just not not good. Um, I think I'll take the pumpkin. Oh. I'll, I'll eat the pumpkin. You'll eat the pumpkin. Tally, tally the pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin eater. Pumpkin eater, give him the marker. There's your tally. Um, I'd have to go with the pants one on that one. The pants? I don't really feel like, I don't really feel like eating pumpkin. Yeah. P oof. Pants? Pants. And for you? I gotta agree. Gotta agree with the pants. I agree with the pants. I've heard, I've heard arguments for both. Just looking for some people. It's really empty out here because it's raining. <sighs> we're having fun, though. Right, Joey? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're having a great time. Yeah. You guys got a moment? Uh, you all right with being recorded? Yeah. Right. Would you rather every time you lie or anything, uh, your pants just spontaneously combust on fire, or every time you cheat, you have to eat an entire pumpkin hole, stem and all. Stem and all. You know, um, oh, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of my pants getting set on fire where I feel like, you know, I feel like it would be a challenge, but I feel like I can eat a whole pumpkin hole. It would just take a while, so. Very time consuming, though. Right. Yeah, very time consuming, but, you know, less pain than the pants, for right. sure, you know? We got a question for you. All right, I don't know you personally, but Joey knows you, so we can just come up to you. Um, every time I lie, my pants got, got sweaty. All right, all right. I feel like I get used to the pumpkin eventually. You, you also pumpkin. lie a lot more than you cheat. So. All right, all right. All right, another vote for the pumpkin. All right. I've eaten pumpkin before, and it tastes of rotten onions. So, so pants? Uh, that being said... Uh, that being said, uh, I don't cheat, 
So okay. I, don't, I won't be eating any pumpkins anymore. All right, all right. I'm having Joey do two because uh, he thought it was fun and wanted to do it. Cameraman Joey is uh, going to interview some people. Question. <laughs> Would you rather every time that you cheat on anything, test, game, whatever, uh -huh. uh, you have to eat a pumpkin hole, stem, the entire thing, okay. or uh, every time you lie, uh, your pants just spontaneously catch on fire? I'm saying lie. Okay, okay. I would eat pumpkin. Pumpkin? Yeah. Really? This, this is a bit of a tough choice for me. You know, uh, I, although I think I'm going to have to go with, uh, uh, what was the full option for pumpkin? Uh, choose your, choose your pumpkin. Either. Yeah, I, I'd rather eat a whole pumpkin than, like, suffer one of the worst injuries ever. Alright, so, I gotta say, we make fun of Matt J. Bly a little too much here. Chris, we gotta stop. We do have to stop. We keep harassing him. So, anyways, now you might have heard Austin say something about a second question. Yep. What was that second question, Austin? The second question is whether I should shave or not. As you can see by the results and by my facial hair, people told me to keep it by a landslide. Mom, I'm sorry. Well, let's just see them talking about it. Let's roll the clip. Now, the next question is my beard or wherever it is. Shave it or keep it? All right, now we know. I think, I think you should personally you know, keep it. Keep it? All I right. Think, I think I think you should keep it for now. All right. We'll keep it for now. I shave it. Shave it? All right. My beard, or whatever my facial hair is right now, should I keep it or just shave it all off? I think you should keep it going. Keep it going? Keep all right. Going. I think you keep it. I'm, I'm a person. I'm a big, I'm a big facial right. hair guy. You know, I, I, th hair I, I, think, I think you keep it. Shave it, definitely. Shave it. All right. I want you to shave it. Okay. You look like... Um, this is why. This is why. You I look like a um, a badger, to be honest with you. Oh. In the recording. You know, I gotta say, Special was right, but the fair cherry do kind of look. Like I don't a look like a badger, Chris. I say you look like a badger. I don't. All right. Anyone else think I look like a badger? I think. I think so. Stop raising your hand. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Studio thinks that he's a badger, but that's okay. So when we come back, we will talk about today's question from Talk of the Town. It's not uh, I actually just spoiled it. I was supposed to say, see what our answer is. Well, that's all right. Everyone. We'll talk about it. Don't go anywhere. President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. What's what's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, this, we go on at like 11.30. It's like... No. What do you mean no? It's 10.30. 10.30? Yeah, it's 10.30. What do you mean it's 10.30? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey, man. Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow. Wow. Get a closer to that one. Matthew, Matthew can you look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. Really, 
enter our final block for the night. But that's okay, because we have one more segment for you guys. We got answers about a question from around campus today. What is our answers? Let's talk about it very quickly. All right, the answers are, and the results are by almost even, actually. Uh, pumpkin, people would rather eat an entire pumpkin. And people think I should keep it. I, I don't agree. I don't understand. Here, let me, let me get the marker for a second. I honestly say, because I never got a chance to, I'd say shave it. Yeah, because you know me personally. Everyone just wants to see me suffer. Anyway. Yeah. Well, let's ask the, stu let's yeah, ask the people studio. in the studio. Come here. How about we all, let's all come up. Let's see. Yeah. What do we Cast think about uh, the votes? Cast your votes. We have... Shave it 100%. Shave it 100%. Am I actually... Bye -bye. Emily, Mike, Is, is it going to be shaved gentlemen? by next Good week? Lots. Who knows? Bye. Womp. <laughs> Yeah, I think you got a good idea there. I definitely say shave it. Yeah. I want to uh, see a baby All right, face. all right. They're, they're, the people and on I, the radio are saying shave it. Yeah, we, we could add like a few more over here. Am I uh, free? From the uh, control. Everyone control room says shave it. How many people are in the it. control room? Well, six Everyone, shave Six shave six? it? All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, it's, six. Oh, it's not enough. It is. Wait, oh, no. wait. Oh, it is. It it's is enough. enough. Austin will oh. shave it next Mom, episode. Mom, you're going to be proud. Woo! Little My beard's gonna be gone, and it will never return unless I get a punishment. Uh, we'll see. Maybe that maybe that'll be a future segment. Yep. All right. So, you know, I mean, the question was really supposed to be uh, the pumpkin or the. Uh, the yeah, the pumpkin. Uh, what do you guys think for the pumpkin? I personally, I would say the pumpkin. I don't know. Good. Everyone. We got a few All pants right. in the studio. Pants. All anyway, right. Chris, uh, that was our first episode. That was our first episode. We had a lot of fun. You know, I got to say, I think we'll it was say. a great time. Yeah, we had a great time. This was a great time. Uh, I, I will, uh, fun show. I can't wait to see how it will go throughout the semester. We need, to, we need to seriously stop harassing Matt. Yeah, well, that's, that's one thing. We will absolutely stop harassing Matt. Matt, we're sorry. Matt, we apologize. We love you. We love the interview show. I uh, we watch it. We never watched it. No. That's okay. We'll watch. We'll Instagram, watch it for next time. Uh, our Instagram should be right here. Yep. Look, look Instagram. At look uh, at it. Go follow it. Uh, yeah. We'll be posting. Uh, thank you guys so much, and we will see you in the next episode. Yes, we will. We have thirty seconds. You you just did that for no reason. Oh. How do you feel? I feel good. Good. Have a good night, people. We'll see you tonight on WTUP 10 Nightly News. How public school attendance is changing. And why well, you might have heard so many sirens in town yesterday. Plus, the outpouring of support following the deaths of two Syracuse police officers. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Casey DeSell. And I'm David Rienzo. The city of Oswego is reeling tonight after two members of law enforcement were killed on duty last night. With the details on the shooting is WTOP 10's Logan Russo. Logan, what updates have come on in the past few hours? Casey David, we now know the names of the two law enforcement officers killed last night. In a press conference this afternoon, Syracuse police tell us that the men are Michael Jensen and Michael Husak. Michael Jensen was a Syracuse City police officer. Husak ended up being a Onondaga County Sheriff's deputy. We now also have a full timeline of the events that happened in the town of Salina. Around 7 p.m., a Honda Civic was going around 100 miles per hour through Tipperary Hill in Syracuse. A traffic stop was conducted by Jensen and another officer, but the car fled and evaded police. They got the license plate and the registration linked and went to a home on Darien Drive in Salina that was linked to the registration. Because they were outside of the jurisdiction of the uh, city of Syracuse, as well as a tip gained about potential weapons, the Onondaga County Sheriff was called. All officers arrived on the scene about two hours later. Three officers surrounded the property and found weapons in the car before hearing gun manipulation inside. That'd be, for example, loading a gun. Uh, the officers spread around the yard after hearing this. Husak was ambushed in the backyard after being shot while hiding behind a tree. Uh, the suspect, Christopher Murphy, then ended up moving to the front yard from the backyard where he shot and killed Officer Jensen as Jensen returned fire. Uh, Murphy was then shot in his driveway. All men died at Upstate University Hospital. According to Bill Fitzpatrick, who is the Onondaga County DA, the men were inside doing drugs when uh, he was uh, grabbed an AR and told a friend to leave the home as police arrived. So all the officers, um, obviously two of them dead, one survived and the suspect now dead. Um, really sad story. Uh, obviously, uh, back to you guys at the desk. Oswego Mayor wrote Robert Corradino 
is praising the fast response of emergency services to, to a water incident in the Oswego Harbor. Yesterday afternoon, emergency crews received a call about the possibility of a person in the water near the Best Western Hotel. Oswego Fire and Police immediately began rescue efforts. Personnel did not locate anyone in the water and set up a strategic search grid. Search efforts were affected by the strong currents in the Oswego River. At this time, the search efforts has been negative and there are no reports of missing persons. Anyone with information about this incident should contact the Oswego Police at 315-342-58. 8120. Mayor Corradino is allocating $50,000 from the Oswego Police Department's budget to ramp up quality of life patrols and special investigations. The funding will increase the number of officers patrolling city neighborhoods on the weekends while also devoting more time and personnel to homeless outreach programs. These outreach programs will be enhanced by the assistance of the department's new mental health clinician. Residents can accept, uh, expect to see more foot and bike patrols in the downtown and waterfront areas to address previous complaints and concerns. Between now and April 28th, Oswego University Police will remind the campus community of the importance of wearing seatbelts with their Click It or Ticket campaign. The department regularly participates in a spring traffic enforcement and awareness campaign with the focus this year being on seatbelts. In 2021, over 11,000 passenger vehicle occupants were killed in crashes due to not wearing their seatbelt. The Lakers completed 50 hours of community service last week to celebrate 50 years of Division III athletics. SUNY Oswego joined hundreds of, it, of Division III colleges and universities across the country. The teams that participated in Oswego were women's hockey, soccer, swimming and diving, basketball, volleyball, and men's lacrosse and soccer. Organizers said the campus can expect to see many more activities from the Lakers in the community. After a rainy weekend, the weather certainly seems to be getting warmer. Let's join Storm Team 10 meteorologist Brennan Rice outside of Murano for a first check at the weather. Brennan, how's it looking out there? Uh, thank you guys. Currently it's a little bit chilly out here, it's in the 40s, but we got clear skies and we've been living up that nice sunny weather lately, but they may not be here to stay. Coming towards the middle of this week and later this week, there could be a chance for some more rain and even a thunderstorm or two. We'll have more of that, plus your seven-day forecast coming up after the break. Until then, back to the desk. Thank you, Brennan. Today marks the start of Work Zone Awareness Week across New York State. Governor Kathy Hochul announced that this Wednesday, state landmarks will be lit up in orange to honor highway workers. In 2023, the State Department of Transportation experienced 214 work zone traffic incidents and nearly 200 crashes in work zones, leading to 37 injuries. The automated work zone speed enforcement and Operation Hard Hat programs created to protect work zone workers continue this construction season. The number of public school students missing class remains high compared to pre-COVID numbers, according to figures released last week by the New York State Board of Education. Students who are chronically absent are defined as missing at least 10% of school days in a year. Among Oswego County High Schools, the Fulton High School District posted the highest rate of 50 students per 100 chronically absent. County schools are actively combating the absent, absentee issue by sports programs along with promoting welcome, welcoming conditions for all students. The John Wells Pratt House Museum in Fulton is now open for the season bringing back its popular chocolate works display. All history and chocolate lovers are invited to enjoy the sweet memories of the Nestle Chocolate Factory. The museum is celebrating 45 years of preserving Fulton's history and culture. The museum is open 10 to 3 Wednesdays through Fridays. For more information, call the John Wells Pratt House Museum at 315-598-4616. Still ahead tonight, why Israel's plans to attack Rafa have been delayed. Plus, the rare and colorful sight you may enjoy if you look to the night sky this week. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. <laughs> Do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. 10 out of 10 recommend on Yelp.
we're going to the playoffs. I can't believe I missed that. Every time I'm buzzed, I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. OK, you know what? <laughs> yep, that's mine. I'm going to need that back. No. Kevin. Welcome back to WTOP. I'm your Storm Team 10 meteorologist, Gordon Rice. Currently, we're going to be looking at some of your headlines here, including some current conditions, chance of some thunderstorms even on Wednesday, and a look from above, plus your seven-day forecast. As we look around the state right now, temperatures are pretty mild in the 50s towards central New York. Here it's 49 in Oswego. Head towards western New York. It's in the 40s, 50s continuously. The only place it's actually somewhat warm is down in Kingston, which you can't see right now, but it's in the 60s down there. Um, as we look at uh, more of the current conditions here in Oswego, it's pretty much clear skies, a few clouds out there, and some uh, gusty winds at just a 9 to 13 miles per hour. Otherwise, it's pretty calm. Um, dew points right at 32, so conditions are pretty pleasant out there. Um, as we look over into uh, tonight, we're going to be seeing a low of about 40 degrees. Those skies are going to continue to clear. Um, and still, that wind is going to remain multi, uh, relatively mild as we head into tomorrow. We're going to be seeing our high of around 53 degrees, that wind coming from the northwest, and sunny skies as that high pressure continues to make its way over us. Now, if we're looking at the out-the-door forecast right now, it seems like tomorrow, again, pretty mild conditions. Starting the day off by 9 in the morning, about 45 degrees. We start to get towards, uh, in the early afternoon, those uh, mid or sorry, lower 50s there. We might even get towards that 53 high uh, about 4 p.m. From there, it starts to taper off. And as we look towards ahead, we could be seeing some more rain in the forecast, unfortunately. Not really anything for tomorrow to worry about, but Wednesday in the afternoon, we could be looking at a chance for a thunderstorm or two. Thursday, it's most likely going to be showers intermittent through the day, and that chance will still linger in on a Friday. Saturday morning, a small chance, but a noticeable one still for some showers there. As we look at the uh, forecast, the bigger picture above, we're seeing some... Those pressures, this is the next three days. Um, tomorrow, that high pressure is going to be pretty much right over us, leading to those sunny skies, those nicer conditions. However, it's not going to last. Unfortunately, some showers are going to be making their way up to the Midwest as that warm front starts to make its way here. Temperatures will increase, but once it arrives by uh, Thursday, you'll see it's pretty much right on top of us, and we'll start getting a lot of that rain throughout the day. Now, as you look at your seven-day, temperatures are going to be pretty, again, mild. You'll see once that rain starts coming in with that warm front, those temperatures start to get a bump up there, even until the low is almost 50 degrees. Um, those rainy conditions, again, Wednesday, some chance of thunderstorms, continuing Thursday and Friday for some rain. Saturday, small chance, mostly clearing into partly sunny skies. And by that weekend, temperatures start to dip off a little bit, but the skies kind of clear. That's all for me. Back to the desk. Brendan, thank you. Israel was set to move toward a ground offensive in Rafah this week, but had to delay those plans because of Iran's attack. The Israeli Air Force was set to start dropping leaflets on, part of, on parts of Rafah in preparation for a ground attack on Gaza's southernmost city, where more than a million people are currently sheltering. One Israeli officer said Israel still intends to carry out the attack, although they are not sure when. The Supreme Court says that it will not take up an appeal from Black Lives Matter activist DeRay McKeeson who was facing a lawsuit from Louisiana police officer who was hit in the head with an object during a protest in 2016. The case is making its way through the courts since 2017, and McKeeson is still being sued for negligence in federal court, arguing that he knew the demonstration would lead to a violent act. After several failed attempts to delay the criminal process, former President Donald Trump faces the courtroom today as the hush money trials is set to begin. This case is the first of Trump's four criminal cases to go to trial, and could be only one to do so before Election Day. Correspondent Gloria Pesmino is in Lower Manhattan with more on the story. Former President 
President Donald Trump is on trial, charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. Under New York state law, it is a felony to falsify business records with intent to defraud and an intent to conceal another crime. That is exactly what this case is about. Trump has pleaded not guilty and denied the allegations. This is an assault on America. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Prosecutors say Trump tried to cover up hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels in order to silence her about a sexual encounter she says she had with him in 2006, which Trump denies. Prosecutors are expected to argue it was all part of a broader scheme to influence the 2016 election. Hundreds of New Yorkers will report for jury duty this morning, but picking the right jurors won't be simple. 12 men and women plus six alternates will ultimately decide Trump's fate. Jurors will answer a 42-question survey as both sides try to spot signs of bias. Both prosecutors and the defense want to know where jurors get their news. If they ever worked for the Trump Organization, they'll be asked if they support or are members of the Proud Boys and other groups. The trial is expected to include testimony from witnesses including Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, and former White House staffers Hope Hicks and Kellyanne Conway. In Manhattan, I'm Gloria Pasmino. This is one of four trials that Trump is facing right now. He is the first former president to face criminal charges. The Liard meteor shower is set to begin this week and is projected to peak the night of Sunday, April 21st. This event is one of the oldest known meteor showers on record and can be seen from all over the world for this entire week. The showers occur when Earth passes through a debris trail left behind by comets and other space objects. The debris collides with Earth's atmosphere, disintegrates, and creates colorful streaks in the night sky. Prior to the start of its annual marathon this morning, the City of Boston and the Boston Athletic Association honored the victims of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. The one Boston Day Memorial Ceremonies included visits to some uh, memorial, memorial sites of Boylston Street where the, final attack, where the fatal attack took place. Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey and Boston Mayor Michelle Wu joined victims' families for wreath layings. Three people were killed from the explosions in 2013 and an MIT police officer was also killed a few days later during the search for the suspects. More than 200 others were injured. When WTOP 10 Nightly News returns, how Tesla struggles are affecting employees. And actions by pro-Palestine protesters cause delays across the country. <coughs> mm, I'm going to hold that. Welcome back to Major Discussions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Welcome back. In consumer news, 
Tesla will be slashing 10% of its workforce, according to the Washington Post. CEO Elon Musk has informed employees today of the layoffs, citing the need to reduce costs and increase productivity. This comes amid a lower demand for electric vehicles. Tesla reported a sharp drop in vehicle deliveries in the first quarter, while their stock has lost a third of its value this year. This morning, pro-Palestine protesters caused disruptions in both Chicago and California. In Chicago, prote protesters block Interstate 190 outside of Terminal 1 at the O'Hare Airport during rush hour. Many people heading to the airport ended up leaving their vehicles and walking in order to catch their flights. In California, protesters completely blocked southbound lanes on the Golden Gate Bridge. Police arrested more than a dozen people between the two incidents. It's tax day. Tax filers have just hours left to file a return or request an extension. Otherwise, you might end up paying an additional fee. That fee could climb to 25% of the taxes you owe if you wait too long. Amy Kyle reports on how to file or get an extension quickly. Fastest way to get your refund is to electronically file and to receive that refund through a direct deposit. It's not too late to file a tax return or request more time. Some people automatically get an extension. Residents of Maine, Massachusetts, and Washington, D.C. have an extra day or two for observed holidays. People who live or work in federally declared disaster areas can check their deadlines at irs.gov. It's possible to request an automatic six-month extension for free through an IRS partner on the agency's website. The deadline for that is today, and it involves paying estimated taxes. For those who want to file before midnight tonight... And the IRS this year is attempting a direct file with multiple states. People not in direct file states can check out the IRS's trusted partners. Those with an adjusted gross income of $79,000 or less can file with them for free. Others can use paid services. Experts urge taxpayers to enter information correctly. Something as simple as just, you know, fat fingering your social security number, you know, could really cause you a headache. Watch out for scams. If you didn't initiate that contact, go to the source and avoid late fees. Sometimes people get scared and they're like, oh my goodness, I owe money, I'm not going to file. And for that, we really encourage people, go ahead and file. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. If you know you're due a refund, you have some wiggle room. The failure to file a penalty won't apply to you. Two new reports show that coral reefs around the globe are experiencing a fourth mass bleaching e event which could become the worst in recorded history. 54% of the planet's coral reefs have undergone bleaching in the past year. The last 12 months being the hottest in history have contributed to the problem. Experts say if the ocean temperatures don't return to normal, mass coral reef death could threaten multiple species and food chains. Coming up in sports, we'll hear from Ryan Joyce. Ryan, can you give us a quick preview? Oswego Sports nearing the playoffs, Masters has their winner and a legend retiring. Coming up next on WTOP 10 News. Class of 76, yes, way back in 76, back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. The kind of late, kind of late, kind of late, the kind of late show with Chloe and Anna. Like licorice, Twizzlers, absolutely nasty. The thought of turkey is just nauseating. I, I think can't. you're wrong, is what I think. You think I'm wrong a lot of time. I do think you're wrong a lot. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the 
keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Welcome back, everyone, to WTOP 10 News. I'm Ryan Joyce with your Monday Night Sports Report. The Oswego men's and women's lacrosse teams had a very successful weekend after the men's lacrosse team beat SUNY Plattsburgh 12-6 to to remain undefeated in the SUNYAC and moved to 8-3 on the season. Corey O'Connor almost outscored Plattsburgh by himself with five goals on the day and two goals from Liam Sexton as well. On the other side, the women's lacrosse team took down the lone undefeated team in the SUNYAC, SUNY New Paltz, 14-13. The big three of Bella Lembo, Julia Quirk, Madison Davis scored 12 of Oswego's 14 goals as they improved their playoff seeding on the season. The Oswego men's baseball team improved their play since a non-existent conference play with two out of three wins versus SUNY Brockport over the weekend. The Lakers had a wacky schedule as they played two games in Onondaga Community College in Syracuse and one game in Auburn, New York. The Oswego pitching staff is what really stood out this weekend as in game one, Jake Sanders went four innings only allowing two runs, and in Game 3, Jonas Shear went seven innings, six strikeouts, and three runs. The Lakers moved to 13-9 on the season and 4-2 and in the conference. But Scotty Scheffler remains dominant in the golf world as the world number one with the 2024 Masters in easy fashion. A closing 4-under 68 lifted Scheffler to 11-under overall in the day and sealed his third win in just over a month. This is Scheffler's second Masters win in two years and he becomes the fourth youngest player to achieve the feat behind Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, and Seve Balaceros. Throughout all the chaos, Scheffler's wife Meredith is expecting the couple's first child any day now and a couple good days for Scotty Scheffler. And an OB in professional baseball news, longtime Yankee radio announcer John Sterling is retiring immediately as we'll start off with the Knicks. Playoff seeds for both teams. Oh, Retiring media announced by the Yankees on Monday, Jer Sterling, who is leaving citing health reasons, elapsed a 64-year broadcasting career with 36 years in the Yankees broadcast booth and called 5,420 regular season games and 211 postseason games, including five World Series titles. The Yankees will honor Sterling with a ceremony pregame this upcoming Saturday before their game versus the Tampa Bay Rays. But now we move over to the Mecca. Last game of the season for both teams. Knicks playing for the two seed, Bulls playing for the play in spot. As we'll start it with the third quarter, Jalen Brunson with a three point shot over the hands of Nikola Vucevic. Brunson on the year, averaging 28.7 points per game. Third all time for a Nick behind Carmelo Anthony and Bernard King. And then with the contact, Jalen Brunson gets it to go in the fourth quarter. Ties this one up 40 points, eight rebounds, seven assists for Jalen Brunson. Big game for himself as. Tie game now, Kobe White up and under, gets nifty with that one. 26 points in a resurgence year for Kobe White. And Jalen Brunson loses the ball, has a chance to win the game for the Knicks. Rims in and out, and the Knicks fans are going to have to watch another five minutes of basketball see the playoff hopes for both teams. But Jalen Brunson double team leaves Dante DiVincenzo wide open with a three-point shot. 25 points in the game for Dante DiVincenzo, played the entire game except for 30 seconds. But DeMar DeRozan does not want to lose this one. Drive by former teammate OG Anunobi. 30 ball for the Bulls as they're back in this one. And DeMar DeRozan, one last shot. With a little stutter step, floater for him. Rims in and out, does not get that one to go. One of the clutchest players in the NBA, DeMar DeRozan, cannot get that one to go. The Knicks will win this one. Best record, 50-32 and 32, since the 2012-2013 season when the Knicks were the 2C as well. And the Knicks will face the winner of Wednesday's playing game versus Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Ryan, thank you. Stick around to learn about three newly discovered marsupials. All right, so.
with sports and news and what to do, we're here for you. It's your TV, your TV, you're watching WTLP. Your TV, your TV, thanks for watching WTLP. Big news for kangaroo fans tonight. Scientists have discovered three species of kangaroos that lived up to five million years ago. While working in southern Australia, researchers found three complete skeletons. The kangaroos would have, a lo have looked a lot like modern ones, but more stout and muscular. The largest was six and a half feet tall and likely went extinct 40,000 years ago. Wow. Did you guys know that uh, Ryan Brummer actually owns a kangaroo in Texas? He has a kangaroo? Yeah. Is that legal? That's awesome. I don't know how it's legal. <laughs> Does it seem like you should be able to own a kangaroo? <laughs> that kangaroo, huh? For anyone who doesn't know, Ryan Bubber works at the studio here. Uh, <laughs> that's our report for tonight. Be, student, be sure to stay tuned for the break with Scott and Kaylee. Thank you for watching. Have a great Tonight, we're getting spooky as we chat with the cast of SUNY Oswego's The Addams Family. Plus, Jacob Bradley joins us at the table for an extended edition of Bradley's Breakdown. And it's a total solar eclipse. We'll give you our thoughts on the once-in-a-lifetime event, right now. From the Al Roker studio in the Murano Campus Center, it's The Break with Scott Brubaker and Kaylee Richmond. It all starts in three, two, one. one. Hello and welcome to episode number four of The Break with Scott and Kaylee. As always, I'm Kaylee Richmond, I think, and I'm joined by my trusty so co-host, <laughs> yeah. Scott Brubaker. Scott, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I think I'm doing great. You, you know, think? I never know. Well, that's not very convincing, Scott. No, sorry. Well, you know why I am great? <laughs> it's because today, for the first time this season, well, we've had a mini live studio audience the entire time, but right? we have a, we have we a have fairly a live big studio live studio audience. audience. So, yeah. Yay! Woo. It's Brian thank Burrows, you. there's my sister Maria, Maria, Ryan Joyce, and Zach Malamud. Yay, thank you guys for coming. A special announcement about Zach Malamud. Yes, yeah, Zach Malamud uh, officially announced he has a new job after graduation. He will be working as uh, in production for the NFL. He's moving to L.A., so we just wanted to shout him out and say Woo. congratulations. Yay! And real quick, before we before we start talking about the um, our first story, I just wanted to point out our orchid that we have here in the middle. Yeah. It's National Orchid Day. Yes. Um, so we just, just wanted to celebrate. Just, well, I just want to give the quick story. We'll cut the eclipse a little short. But okay. um, we So this was a gift to me from my grandmother. It was originally a gift to my great-grandmother. Um, my great-grandmother had Parkinson's, and she used to shake, and the table would, like, the orchids would, like, fall off, mm. and she never knew why. So my grandma gave her this one instead. Oh, that's such a nice story, yeah. but All it's right. beautiful. Thank you. Should we move on? Yes, we should. All right. So last week on April 8th, SUNY Oswego had the day off to view the total solar eclipse, but Kaylee and I did not have the day off. That's right, Scott. So on Eclipse Day, Scott and I hosted Oswego Now's 2024 Eclipse the, Special. The be yeah, real got a little Be Real Notification, <laughs> which was an hour-long broadcast that encapsulated Oswego's Eclipse experience. So, Scott, what was it like to host a broadcast such as this? It was really fun, you know. I we we done special event coverage before when you and I did election, uh, election night yes. last year, and I just thought it was really cool, like to 
do something like a little different. Like yeah. we do a lot of the politics stuff here in the news. So mm -hmm. like being able to do something else was really fun. What did you think? For sure. Yeah. No, it was awesome. And I, I we had mentioned this before that it's basically going to be. I'm going to move this out. Of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Way. It's basically going to be the break eclipse edition. Yeah. Um, because it was just us yapping, but it was great uh, to have like a big final broadcast that all of us worked on as a class and. You know, it was great to co-host with you. I, I feel very comfortable with you on air. So, so do I. Yeah. And the eclipse itself was awesome. I know it was such amazing, such an amazing experience. Yeah. So so glad to have done that. But speaking of final broadcasts, this is our last regular episode of the break. But don't worry, <sighs> you haven't seen The Last of Us yet. So in a few weeks, we're going to air our hour-long farewell episode uh, as we say goodbye to the break and look forward to what the future holds for us. It's, we do have a little shout out to our friends at the Kinda Late Show. Got the Kinda Last Show here. You'll but see Kaylee, why. I know you just joined the show, but how are you feeling um, this, since this is our Kinda Last Show? Yeah, this is Kinda our last show, but it, it's very bittersweet. You know, I'm very thankful to be here, and you know, I'm happy that you've asked me to be your new co-host. I could never be Kate Donahue, but um, we you miss know, you, Kate. We miss you, Kate. Um, but I've had so much fun. Uh, we've done so many like fun things, so I'm very happy to have had this experience, Scott. Uh, this show has been your baby. I know, and I'm just trying to live out. in the moment of thinking this is not the last one because I know next time. I keep telling myself I'm not yes. going to cry. I no. think we all know don't. that there's going to be Please some tears then I will cry. episode. And it's, it's going to be, we have a lot of stuff already planned for it, which is awesome. Yes. So let's move now over to the West Coast as it was the first weekend of the Coachella Music Festival. Now, I really don't know much about Coachella, so why don't you tell us a little more about it? For sure. So Coachella is a massive music festival that takes place every year in Indio, California, which is essentially the desert. And some of the biggest names in music perform this weekend, Lana Del Rey, Tyler, the Creator, Ice Spice, Sabrina Carpenter, and so much more and even though she wasn't performing my girl Taylor Swift and her beau <laughs> Travis Kelsey were in attendance so Scott just by looking at this list of performers who is someone that you'd like to see perform someday well I see no doubt up there please correct me if I'm wrong but that's with the uh, uh, Gwen Stefani yes. right? Yeah, yeah she performed think, this weekend and I love Gwen Stefani so I would have liked to see that I feel like the kind of band that would like be there would be like AJR that's like my favorite band yeah. I don't know that gives the vibe of Coachella for sure yeah I, ha I do feel like AJR has performed at Coachella before I don't know about this year but I think in the past they have but they're coming to like Pennsylvania and like the tri-state area soon so the goals to go yes fingers crossed I hope you go Thank I really you. do <laughs> no so now you know all of this talk about music festivals is kind of making me hungry are you hungry Scott you know what I kind of feel like it's time for a grilled cheese a grilled cheese well it's Friday was National Grilled Cheese Day, so I thought that we'd celebrate right together in. on air with a grilled cheese sandwich from Crossroads. Shout out Crossroads and MCC. We so, ate half earlier. So. Yes. So, oh. Scott, what is your favorite way to eat a grilled cheese? So, like, I you? get mine. I do white bread mm -hmm. um, with pepper jack cheese on it, Ooh. which is really good. And yeah. then I have a little mixture of ketchup and hot sauce. Okay. Interesting. What you know, about you? Yeah. I... Um, I'm basic. I like wheat bread and I like cheddar cheese or I also like pepper jack. So it was kind of a choice between do I do cheddar or pepper jack today? What'd you get? Um, cheddar. Cheddar? I Can't really don't want to eat this with my mic on. Right, no. So I might I might wait to, oh, okay. I guess we'll just eat. <laughs> it's the mukbang. The mukbang part hear, two. <laughs> hear that crunch. A little uh, ASMR. We'll save the rest for commercial. Please. Exactly. That's really <clears> good. <throat> oh my god. I don't know. So good. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> so. Wow, okay. So. But two weeks in a row now that we've had this topic, this final little topic. <laughs> yes, it is, because it's someone's birthday today. Yes, it is. That's why I'm, whoa, I just <laughs> want to say happy birthday, Mom. Just wanted to take a few seconds of the show to say thank you so much for everything you do for me. And although we can't be together today, I just want to wish you all the best on your special day. Aww. Here's a picture of us at Admitted Students Day, um, not Admitted Students Day, Family and Friends Weekend last yeah. year. So I love you, Mom. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. Now it's time for our favorite segment. How, How real are we? Are we? <laughs> All right. Let's, Let's see, see who's first I, today. The anticipation is killing me. It's okay. Me. So uh, this is my favorite be real that I took uh, the past couple weeks. This is when Scott and I decided to go on a little date to Kiyomi. Um, we just were in the moment, and um, <laughs> I think Be Real went off, and I think both of us got to take a picture, but um, 
Yeah, this was definitely my favorite moment. You know, I haven't been to Kiyomi in a while, so it was nice to go. I was confused for a second why we were so dressed up, and that was when right. we, were, we were filming our headshots for the eclipse. For the eclipse, yes. yes. Yeah. For a 10 second oh, shot. Yeah. But, yeah. And it looked really good. It, so it shout out good. Jacob Bradley for yes. his great camera work. <laughs> All right, what's next? Let's see. Uh, this is us, a um, couple of our audience members, me, Ryan Joyce, Zach Malamud, and then Natalie, who's filling in on teleprompter tonight. Um, yes. That's us at Gibby's. Mm -hmm. We were big fans of Gibby's around here. Of course, you know, love Gibby's. We always have such a good time there. This was after the Eclipse broadcast on Monday. Then you you came um, about 20 minutes after that. Yes. So. Yeah. So it was a fun night. Yeah. Great picture. All right. All right. Who's slacking? Oh, it's me slacking. You know, this might be the nicest slacking picture I've had so far this semester. You know, this was me. Uh, I went home this weekend and I went grocery shopping and I just couldn't find myself to you know, get out of my car because it was raining and I really didn't want to go outside. But, you know, the grocery shopping had to get done. So that was me kind of slacking, I guess. And then we only have a couple seconds. So this one I took in my bed. I think this was Sunday. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I took this, the first thing I did was text Kaylee and I said, I know what my slacking is going to be. <laughs> now I'm just like, I can't I wait. No, it was great. All right. <laughs> well, and now it's time. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's my turn oh. to introduce my our bad. actual favorite segment. My bad. It's Bradley's Breakdown. Yeah, that's what they, you guys are always so kind, like I say with this. So today, um, what we did, because this is, I don't want to spoil anything for later, but this is a little, potentially a little part one. We're going to do some uh, some Q&A from the audience that we had. On we Instagram. Got, yeah, on Instagram. Okay. We got the audience here a couple weeks ago. Now we're going to do the audience um, from all around the world. So we'll start with a question. I'll be moving to Oswego soon. What are some of the best places to eat? Ooh. Ooh, so... I say um, press box always. Press box, of course. Southern Fair. Yes, I I haven't tried there yet. So good. Yeah. So worth uh, it. Kiyomi. Um, Red Sun. Red Sun. Yes. Um, Nora's is a great Ooh. like gluten free place. My sister's gluten free, so we're mm -hmm. always looking for like a good like you know gluten alternative place. Um, and uh, as always, Wanzo's, Wanzo's. Calzones. You gotta Duh. go there. Come yeah. on. Open what four to four every exactly. day. Exactly. Oh, but, but I think she'll be here in the summer, so yeah, it'll well, be closed. Fajita Grill. Fajita Grill. Fajita Grill as well. Um, right. Yeah. Should those we move places on? that we like. All right, yeah. What's go. next? A lot of good places. What do you? Oh. What's your top? What's suggestion? yours? I I honestly I, I we just went to a place the other day, uh, La Grasse. Ooh. Oh. That's got a really good burger. It's the first okay. time I ever went out with Matt Sheramita and, and Co. So it was fun. Nice. Um, next one, we were talking about music with Coachella. So what are the types of music you both are into right now? Bands, artists, songs, etc. We'll answer this one a little quicker so we can answer a lot. Yeah, so I guess right now. Five second answer. Okay, uh, Chapel <laughs> Roan is someone who I'm listening to a lot right now. All right, um, AJR has been at the top of mind. I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. I know you're excited because Taylor Swift's new album's coming out soon. So. Yes, can we? Bradley, what about you? I just listened to an album over the weekend uh, by a band called English Teacher. Very good. Oh. Very good. Yeah, Matt, another one that Matt just showed me. Matt showed me Let's ask another question. Uh, what's the worst movie you've ever watched? Ooh. Oh, that's hard. Oh, my sister will remember this one. She's in the audience. You remember when we watched a show called a movie called like a Dog Year, yeah. and it was re we watched it with my mom, and it was just so bad. Yeah. So I don't I don't have any way else to describe it. Sorry to the producers of it. But. Right. Um, I would have to say, uh, there's like this movie about like spiders. It's called like Arachnifo Ew. or something like that. I'm very afraid of spiders, so I'm gonna say that's my least favorite movie that I've ever seen. Yeah, I've always avoided any movies with spiders, but mine was one I watched for the summer. It's called Bo is Afraid. Awful movie. Made okay. no sense. It was three hours too. Interesting. All right, uh, got we'll, time for one more. Okay. Last we'll one. We'll go back to music. What's the best go-to karaoke song? Ooh. Oh. Well, Scott we and I can answer this. Can Valor. we say this? Oh wait. Three, two, <laughs> two one. Valerie. Valerie by Amy Winehouse. Well, sometimes I go out. Well. Okay, we can. Okay, stop. no more, no more, no for copyright reasons. You know? Yeah. Okay. What Bradley, about you? What's your go-to karaoke? I'm a big uh, American Pie fan. Oh, Love right. the whole version. Yeah, so is Ryan Choi. Okay. Our audience right. members like that one. <laughs> you know. But yeah. That's all I got for questions. Okay. Right. Thank you, Bradley. Well, thank you Absolutely. very much, Bradley. Yeah. We'll you see know, you later. Word on, oh, yeah, I was going to say, word on the street is Ooh. you're not going anywhere today. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. We'll have to see. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> coming up, we are sitting down with student actors from the Adams Family to see how they feel about their productions coming up this week. We'll be right back after this. Would you like to try snacks from faraway lands or snacks with bizarre flavors? How about snacks in new ways? Or snacks you've never tried before? You don't have to go far to find these snacks. 
They can all be found here at Snacks on West First Street. Yeah, we're walking around campus, and what do we see? All these clubs are looking. They're looking for me. There's hockey. There's improv. So much to see. So let's, let's go, go try, try them out and see how they be. Come on and please watch our embarrassments free. Tune, Tune in to Amateurs on WTOP. Happy Friday, Lakers, and another beautiful day here in Oswego, New York. I'm DJ Don Perone, and I'm happy that you're starting your weekend off right listening to WNYO 88.9 FM, the Laker Radio Network. I said, darling, can you see? There's no room for us. There's no room. Never lies on TT. Welcome back to the break. The SUNY Oswego Theatre Department is always busy putting on top tier performances. This season included the play The Importance of Being Earnest and very soon SUNY Oswego has a chance to come to a family reunion as the theatre department presents the Adams Family Musical starting on April 16th. That's right Scott, here to tell us more about the show and their journeys through the process of the show is Ian Katz who's playing Gomez Adams and Cameron Weber who's playing Morticia Adams. Ian, Camer Ian and Cameron, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank Absolutely. You so, much. so the cast and crew have been working on this show for the whole semester and opening day is nearing closer by the day. How are you both feeling? Definitely excited but nervous and I just can't wait for the show to open. It's going to be great and I just, I'm really excited mostly. We're feeling ready. Feeling you know, ready. We're all motivated to get this show on the road. <laughs> We've oh, all I'm been putting in 100, 110%. It'll be awesome. That's good to hear. I'm sure it's exciting. I remember leading up to opening day back when I did theater in high school as well. So Cameron, <laughs> you're one of the leading roles, but you're also the one of the dance captains. So how do you handle all of the responsibilities that you have? Um, it's definitely a lot of work, uh, but the biggest thing I do is I make sure I'm prepared outside of rehearsal. So like coming to rehearsal with my lines memorized and my choreography and my blocking so that when I'm actually in rehearsal, I can uh, be present and helping other people and things like that. For sure. And Ian, what do you think the audience is most excited to see when they come to see the show? Oh, God. Where to start? <laughs> I mean, we have so much to offer. You know, uh, we have some amazing puppeteers. I don't want to give anything away, but there are some really, really cool effects that they get to pull off. Um, I think, you know, these are some very iconic characters, and so the portrayal of these characters, I think people will be excited for us to do. So I think there's a lot to look forward to for audiences. For sure. So Gomez and Marticia, you are two very well-known roles. I've, I've known the Adams Family, Gomez and Marticia, since I was a kid. So mm -hmm. have you been working on building that character while also making it your own at the same time? Um, yeah. It's yeah. definitely a lot of pressure <laughs> because they are iconic characters, so you definitely don't want to take away from that. It's like very um, kind of nerve-wracking almost because you want to do it right and you don't want to disappoint your audience. So, yeah. It's also like finding a balance, you know, between finding inspiration and making your, the character your own. You know, Nathan Lane originated the character on Broadway, and so I look to him for a lot of inspiration while trying to make my own choices and find a way to make Gomez, you know, Ian Katz. Yeah, and reflecting on all of this rehearsal time that you've had, what are you most uh, proud of accomplishing throughout this whole process? Um, I'm mostly just proud of everything in general. Um, I'm happy I met and became close with a lot more people throughout this show and just gaining all these new experiences and I'm just really excited to see the final result because it's going to be amazing. So, I'm very proud of the growth that we've accomplished. You know, starting out, um, we had our, our sing-through, um, <laughs> which was so much fun, but seeing uh, the entire cast grow with the show has, has been really rewarding. Yeah. So you just mentioned a sing-through, so we have to ask. Can <laughs> you guys just give us like a little little preview, 30 seconds or so? Yeah, we yeah. can do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's hear it. When you're an Adams, 
You gotta have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> when you're an Adams, you need to have a taste for death. Who cares about the world outside and what it wants from you? When you're in Adams, you do what Adams always do. All right. <laughs> Job. Good job. Good job. Yes, on point. Now, I think after seeing that performance, I don't think anybody would be on the fence about it, but mm -mm. if somebody was on the fence about coming to see this show, what would you say to them? It is such an amazing production. It's so funny. It's so intentional. It's just, it will, it will rock your world. Yeah, there's just a lot going on between like, uh, like all the actors on stage and the lighting and then the music that's playing and the choreography. It's just like a lot of pieces put together and you're just going to be like immersed into the Adams world as soon as you walk in, in the doors. So. For yeah. sure. You guys have given a bunch of information today. Is there anything else you'd like to add that our audience should know about? Come see the show. Come see the Adams family. <laughs> can't wait. It's exciting. Wait. I, yes. I hope to be there. Yes, I will definitely be there yeah. as well. Sweet. We're both admitted theater kids. We've admitted expressed this kids. on the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. job, we so. love the Adams family too, so break a leg, both of you. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you again for joining us today. And you can see both Ian and Cameron and the talented cast and crew of the Adams family in Waterman Theater starting Tuesday, April 16th at 7.30 p.m. and will run until Sunday, April 21st. To purchase tickets, visit the box office website at tickets.oswego.edu. Tickets are free for SUNY Oswego students and $15 for the general public. And when we come back, Jacob Bradley joins us once again, but this time for a special edition of Bradley's Breakdown. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Break on WTOP 10. You need to do something to feel okay to drive you're not okay to drive don't drive buzzed we're on that look that at the boy. bling look at the, do we got a diamond test drive yeah that's getting bad <laughs> yep we 10 out connection. of 10 recommend on yelp yeah. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. Welcome back to the break. Now, Kaylee, I can't believe that we get to do our favorite segment again. I know, Scott, but the, this time it's my turn to announce it. It's time for Bradley's Breakdown Extended Edition. And Woo! here with us, as always, Jacob Bradley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Twice in one day. You guys are so kind. I know. But, uh, Don't mention it. <laughs> so I figured we'd do, like you said, uh, actually before the cameras were even rolling, we'd, throw, we'd do a little throwback. We'd play okay. a little game. Okay. Um, so let's do some Glee-inspired game. Because I know oh. Scott's a big Gleek. And we figured, Kaylee, we'll get you more in the glee as well. Okay, so all the right. rules of this we're getting, game. We're getting word. You need to check your mic before I we need to check my mic. Before we start, is just need to make sure off. that Bradley's mic is on. Oh we got to hear him. Oh, it might be dead. It might be dead. <laughs> oh, no. You start, you start talk talking. Really well. You start yeah, talking. Talk really we'll get, we'll okay. get another battery for okay. you. <laughs> so the rules of this game is I'm going to give a song. And Kaylee, you have to then say whether or not it was in glee or it was not in glee. Okay. If it was in glee, then Scott needs to come in. 
and he needs to then say what episode of Glee it was from. So are we All ready? Right. We're ready. Let's do the first song. Let's do it. First song is Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Was it in Glee or was it not? I Haley? think it was in Glee. Scott? It was not. It was not no. in Glee. <laughs> that it would totally be Glee. a song that they would sing. Sorry. It, All right. right? I, no, that's it was. I, I thought it seemed like it would be. Yeah. What about Loser by Beck? Was it in Glee or was it not? Loser by Beck? Wait, I don't know. What's you know it, what song? does it go like? Can you, get, can you sing it a little? Yeah. I'm a loser, baby, so why don't you kill me? No? Nothing? No, I don't think so. You don't, do you recognize it? It wasn't Glee. Oh, it was? It was in Glee. See, when I think loser, I think of loser like me, the, uh, yeah, like the, that's what I the Glee of. cast original. I, didn't, I don't, I mean, I'm not a, as big of a Glee fan as you, but Sorry. I, it was season one, episode 21. Oh. So I'll have to go back and check that one out. This is right. Jesse St. James episode. Sure <laughs> <laughs> what about Hey Yeah by Outkast? <laughs> I, yes. It was. Yeah. It was. What episode, Scott? I want to say it was a season five episode. It's season four or season five, right? It's season six. Oh, it's season wow. six? Not Ooh. a true fan. I'm kind of trying to block <laughs> that one out of fan. my memory. Sorry, so. I'm trying to do multiple things okay. at once. Let's do Under Pressure by Queen. Um, yes. That was on Glee. Yes. I said, I have no. Oh, no? What? I have no. I'm thinking of Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. Oh. They do Ice Ice Baby. Can you hear me now? Can we hear? Am I heard now? Yeah, yes. all right. It's halfway through the segment. Halfway through okay. the segment. It was not in Glee. What about Karma Chameleon by Culture Club? Karma or Culture Boy George. Karma, Karma Chameleon. Um, <laughs> um, I want to say yes. Was not. It wasn't? I, have, I love how you're not in Glee. Yes. So maybe you could have just played normal yeah. as well. What about Friday by Rebecca Black? Which one's that? It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on All time Friday. great song. I don't, nope, I forgot. Can I answer? I don't think they do that one. I don't. They do. They do? Yeah. When? Season two, episode 20. What's what? the t episode title? How would I know, Scott? Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> they do last, oh, they do last Friday night, but they do that in season three. So. Okay. I'm going off of the Glee fandom Wikipedia page. Oh, I've been oh. there, I've been there often, so. <laughs> What about Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon? Was that in Glee time? Did that come out while Glee was still airing? I don't think so. That's... Scott? I'm gonna go with no, because you not. look like you're about to say no. I was about to say no, yeah. yeah. I was like, wait, that it song was, came out It came out, out the summer after Glee. Uh, I was thinking maybe no, I could trick you at the no. time. Because like, it seems like a Glee song. But right. They, yeah, they, they, would, they, they would do, do that. that. They what about, would do that. What about Creep by Radiohead? Oh, pff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> oh, I did season four, episode, I want to say six. No. What is it? Seventeen. <laughs> but it was still season four, right? It was season four. It was season four. Was season four. Okay. So I'll give you, you can have a point. point. What about Mean by Taylor Swift? Oh, gosh. Um, Probably my favorite Taylor Swift song, by the way. It's a great song. Yeah. Um, I'm a cruel summer kind of guy, but... Well, that, that wasn't in Glee. Um, was in Glee <laughs> I can say that. They, would, they do sing... Um, what's the one Taylor Swift song they sing in Glee? Didn't, didn't they sing White Horse? No. I don't, I don't, I don't think remember. they've sang. Anyway, we they, only have I a minute, so. I don't think they've so sang Mean. Let's get through a couple more. They have sang Mean. Oh, they oh, did? okay. Scott? That's the one in season three. Oh. What episode? I don't know the episode, but Gwyneth Paltrow's in it. Maybe. Episode 20? I think so. Had Gwen? Um, what about Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen? Would you repeat that, please? Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah <laughs> by Leonard Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, I think they have. Yeah. Is that like this? Like the slow one? Yeah. Yeah, they sing that one. Hallelujah. I don't have it. Oh, you don't? I don't Maybe have it. Maybe they don't. Me. Oh my gosh! Hallelujah. Wow. I have one Guys, more. It's been a while since right. I watched Glee. Okay, I have one last one. more. Losing my religion by REM. Do you know that yes. song? Yes. Yeah. They did sing that. They, they do sing what that. Episode? That's season two, episode. Oh, it's early. I want to say seven. I'm going to give you one more guess. Six. No. What is it? Three. It's episode three. That's the Grilled Cheese Us episode. That's right. That's See, it was on purpose. Yeah. I did that on purpose. Wow. Perfect. Good, Good work, Tuesday. Good yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Good what work. an ending. Totally right. made yeah. that in That was fun. Now, real quick, before we go to break, I just want to tell you all that. Make sure to tune into The Last Laker on WTOP oh, tomorrow yeah. night at 1030 because heard that we're going to be making an appearance on it. <laughs> yeah. It's getting kind of late. It me. Is all right. Late. So... Uh, thank you, Bradley, of for course, coming. We appreciate for it. That was fun. <laughs> of course, yeah. The break with Scott and Kaylee will be back right after this. Welcome back to Major Discussion.
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Well, Kaylee, it's hard to believe this, but this fourth and final season of ours is almost done. Be sure to pay attention to our Instagram for updates because our next episode is the series finale of The Break. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for taking a break with us. Yes, thank you for taking a break with us. We're going to be back one more time. Yeah, Can't no wait more tears. It. No more tears, no more tears. Yeah. We promise. Exactly. All right. But thank you for watching. We'll see you next time and have a great night. And once again, thanks for taking a break with us. To the Mick and Nick show. It's great to have you join us. Nick, what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to be talking about our spring break trips, then we talk real about how we deal with burnout, and we end with a fun little game of guess what song. Last week I took a trip across the Atlantic Ocean to Italy. Let's take a look. It's your girl, Michelle. Uh, recently I went to Italy. <coughs> I wanted to take you guys along with me. Come on. <clears throat> My first thought when landing in Rome was that it was much warmer than Oswego. After a short exploration of the hotel, I found a wonderful rooftop lounge and had a minute to bask in the sunlight. We then went to St. Peter's Basilica, where I got to revel in one of my favorite sculptures, La Pieta. My admiration for the artists who contributed to the art here can never be said enough. I'm glad I was able to be in the presence of the creation of Adam and the school of Athens. That night, we went to our first concert. And I'm not gonna lie, I cried when I heard the orchestra play. It has been a dream of mine to listen to an orchestra dressed up in fancy clothes at a fancy venue. This was when I realized that, wow, actually in Italy. The next day, we went to the Roman Forum and the Pantheon. And let me just say, it felt like I was thrown back in time. I could see the Romans walking around, blissfully unaware that they were making history. On 
On our last day in Rome, we went to the Galleria Borghese in the Colosseum. At the Colosseum, I could just hear the Roman crowds go wild. We took the train and got to see the countryside of Italy. When we arrived at our hotel, all of us were in awe at how beautiful it was. On our walk to the art gallery, we got to admire the Renaissance architecture. I thought it was interesting to see the less ornate details of the buildings. called the Uffizi. This gallery was massive, and I wish I had time to look at everything. One of my favorite paintings is The Birth of Venus. I hope one day I can go back to each of these galleries and spend an entire day there learning about the art. After the Uffizi, we had some time to sightsee on our own. I was able to shop around and admire the sunset. On our walk back to the hotel, we ran into a street performer. He reminded me of the performers in New York City. We ended our night with a concert showcasing Beethoven, Mendelssohn, and Brahms. The pianist was amazing with his fast fingers and technique. I thought the conductor was also amazing and that her movements reflected the sound of the piece. Before going to bed, I was able to have a quiet moment on the balcony. Our last stop on our trip was the state water, Venice a beautiful city with many bridges and no ramps you see this video in this video you see excitement and wonder hope this next one right here you don't see anyone in it that's because by the time we arrived at the hotel we were exhausted from walking around venice with our luggage because the vaporetto were so packed we couldn't fit so we walked and crossed 11 staircase bridges with our luggage it was a pretty walk, though. That night, we had our last concert. It was my favorite out of the three. They were playing Mozart, and I was captivated the whole time. I found it interesting that there were natural trumpets and valveless horns. I also found it thoroughly impressive that they went through an entire concert without a conductor. Instead, they followed the concertmaster. The next day, we visited our last gallery. Gallery della Academia. I thought that the paintings were so lifelike I could jump into the canvas. This painting here tells an entire story from one end to the other, titled Scourge of the Serpents. Our last visit was to St. Mark's Basilica. Everything shone gold, and I had the honor of watching the 24-hour clock strike noon. Overall, this trip was eye-opening and life-changing. I got to spend it with wonderful people. I learned so much on this trip, and yes, we were able to ride the Vaporetta. Wow, that was really interesting, Michelle. So, this week on WTOP, K-pop group TWICE has been a force to reckon with in the month of March. TWICE has recently made a comeback with a 12th EP, Ready to Be, with a title track called Set Me Free. The album features five new songs and English versions of Set Me Free and their English single Moonlight Sunrise. This comeback follows TWICE's appearance at the Billboard Award where they won the Woman in Music Breakthrough Award. Yesterday, fans of TWICE were patiently waiting to get their tickets for the North American leg of the Ready to Be tour. If you were one of those unlucky fans who, did get, who didn't get a ticket, don't worry because it was announced today that three more show dates have been added. These additional locations will be Oakland, Houston, and Chicago. 
In other news, a Florida animal shelter will hold an adoption event for their longest staying resident. He is a mixed breed dog who happens to also be named Nicholas. This playful pup is a three-year-old mixed breed pup. He gets along great with people, but not other dogs. He has unfortunately been impounded by the Orange County Animal Services for 94 days. A probable reason of why he has not been adopted is because mixed breeds are not as desirable as purebreds. To encourage people to adopt Nick, Orange County Animal Shelter is holding a Pick Nick event in where the energetic canine will be uncaged and free to roam the yard. After this Saturday, Nick will hopefully be able to find his forever home. Coming up, we'll deep dive into our feelings in our Real Talk segment. Stay tuned because it's about to get real. Say, hey, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm. Team 10. Yeah. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? It's Al Roker. <laughs> Today, we are joined today by Molly DeMarco and Megan Donnelly. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourself, such as your majors and interests? Okay. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Molly DeMarco. I am a music major and a history minor. I am president of Vocal Effect. It's a student-run show choir on campus. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Megan Donnelly. I'm a psychology and music double major with a minor in expressive arts therapy. I'm president of Bubita Psy and the Harry Potter Club on campus. And I'm also treasurer of State Singers. It's great to have you guys on here with us. Let's get right on to the disclaimers. Heavy topics such as trauma and deep emotions will be discussed in this segment of the show. Some topics may be easily triggering and may be hard to listen to. The answers to the question of the day pertain to our experiences only. Please listen to our experiences with an open mind and leave your judgments behind. This is a safe space. We find it very important to delve into these topics because we want to spread awareness about the importance of healing and mental health. We are not licensed therapists, nor studying to be ones. Therefore, if you feel called to ask for professional help, please visit the Mary Walker Health Center on campus to speak with a counselor. You are never alone. So the question of today is, how do you deal with burnout? And to answer that question, we're going to be painting on mini canvases with acrylic paints and some water and paint brushes. So join along if you want. Um, yeah. How do you guys deal with burnout? I deal with burnout by recognizing my emotions. Like every day I have this app where I, you know, think about how I'm feeling. And if I'm not feeling that great, I just, I let myself feel it. I have a cry. I have the emotional experience and validating myself allows me to, you know, feel it and move on and yeah. get to what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Validation is a huge part. I kind of struggle with it, you know, just recognizing certain emotions, but like, you know, going through it and letting myself feel those emo emotions, you know. I feel like 
um, our generation has been accidentally taught that um, to hide our emotions, to push them down, to keep working through it. So like it was kind of a battle to like unlearn that. Mm -hmm. And like for burnout, I mean, I still go through it. I was telling you guys earlier, I am going through it right now. Ever since like uh, last month, it's just, I felt like I've been going, going, going. Then we went to Italy. Then we came back to school. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So like to help out, I just, you know, talk it out. And uh, like do art therapy, music therapy. <laughs> and um, yeah, and just like feel it out, kind of ride the wave, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Megan and I, we were talking about this earlier. Um, one thing that we do is reward ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. I reward myself by buying myself a plant yes. um, because <laughs> I, I love plants, but it's also because my day is going eh. Um, I'm giving a plant life and I'm mm. giving a plant meaning if I feel that I am not giving anyone meaning at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it helps me like put some positivity into the world yes. if I am <laughs> feeling a little negative. So yeah. I like that a lot. How about you? For me, I usually, you know, I like playing video games, so um, usually being surrounded by friends playing games, that's nice for me, a way for me to kind of relax, deal with that burnout, because as I said before, I'm a meteorology major, just, um, you know, it gets hard sometimes, and mm -hmm. so being able to have that nice little, you know, network of people that you can talk to, trust, and just have fun with is a nice little balance that mm -hmm. I can have. Yeah, and one thing I have to pay attention to is like it's good to feel out your feelings, take some time for yourself, mm -hmm. but also to make sure that you don't let those emotions overcome you to where you like don't do anything, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, like you could slip into a depression or and like just not want to leave your room for how many days. It's just, it's sometimes it's so easy to succumb to that. No, mm -hmm. I totally agree. Like for me, it's, you know, Sometimes, you know, especially since we're in dorms, you know, that bed's right next to you, so it's, it's tempting, but, you know, just ride that wave, you know. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that has to do with learning how to say no to things, mm. learning what things, <laughs> learning what things have to take up your time, and learning when yeah. you need to take a step back and be like, genuinely, I can't do this, and yeah. I need help from somebody else to be able to do it. Yeah. Especially student orgs, classes. Yeah. It's a lot of responsibility on top of just like social situations and family. Like you have a lot of priorities and yeah. you're not replaceable in your family, but you're replaceable mm. in certain orgs, you know? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. a great way of putting it. Yeah. 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 And like you as a person, not replaceable in any means, oh, yeah, but in yeah. terms of like position, that's, I always think to myself, like if I can't do it right now, that's okay because someone will be able to help me out you know asking for help which is sometimes I don't want to do and like I, it's also another thing I'm working on <laughs> <laughs> but like in terms of um, what you were saying on um, adding too much on our plate mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of us also do that we're all a music groups so we yeah. definitely we have other stuff outside yes. we all take voice lessons or piano lessons oh, and so you stuff. know we got to balance out all these different things and yeah Oh, that's also that's a nice thing about it though is we're in these groups where you know we're all sharing the same thing like I'm say singers with Molly and Megan yeah. um, we're all working towards a common goal and I, that, that helps me keep motivated a bit you know yeah. especially yeah. seeing the progress over like the yeah. semester um, for me when I think about how stressed sometimes my music major makes me um, it can actually music itself can make me feel better mm. so when we do sing in vocal effects and it's a it's a it's a good time for those a few hours of rehearsals. Yeah. I forget about all the work I have to do and all of the because um, sometimes I don't want to be tested on music. You know. And for vocal effect, it's not we're not testing. And it, it feels rewarding in a sense because you know we're it does. we're the ones that me and Molly we're both um, DCs. We teach some music and you know it feels rewarding to kind of go in there and like see that our efforts are being recognized and that everyone's having fun. Uh, yeah. Especially um, last last year, I always talk about it. Uh, we did "You Will Be Found," mm -hmm. Dear Evan mm -hmm. Hansen, and everyone, even if they didn't love the song, everyone, it was so powerful. I ugh. I remember that was my first semester and in, in mm -hmm. the group. That was that's definitely one of my favorite songs you've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Music definitely helps, like give you an outlet, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't usually 
like sing sing but i'll listen to like sad music if i need to yeah. it's like it's so um cathartic i think that's the word mm -hmm. and like it helps you feel seen in your emotions like yeah. someone else has experienced this as well and like and you're not alone and like it, it sometimes like the world is so big you feel so alone if that makes sense yeah. and like i forget who mentioned it um in the in our italy class someone oh um yeah i remember someone said that it made her feel really small right all yes. the places she went to oh they were huge though yeah yeah the big <laughs> <laughs> stores oh yeah big doors and even though like the the places in italy were very narrow it was um the pantheon was huge mm. and it just reminded me how small we can be mm. and how insignificant our actions can be and like that could be twisted into a negative way but in a positive way it just shows like you know that a bit embarrassing moment that you keep thinking about two weeks ago mm -hmm. doesn't matter yeah. that's a very good strategy for moving on from mistakes like the mistakes you make they make you a better person mm -hmm. you don't have to dwell on them mm -hmm. I remember on the plane, on the way there, and I get like this every time I go on planes, and I just think, wow, the world is so huge. And I think of it as, if I make a difference, mm -hmm. even in uh, Sydney, Oswego, mm -hmm. you know, like that we're part of like the whole world. I, I, I just feel so helpful, and I really appreciate what I can, what I can bring, what I can yeah. put out to the universe. Yeah, you I can be significant to someone. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the world. And I'm great. in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. So we're out of time for Real Talk, unfortunately. So let's go on to our song of the week. So first off, my song of the week, um, it's by NMIX. It's called Love Me Like This. It's a song that just came out. I love it so much. The album itself is so good. Yeah. My song of the week is called... If sorry, <laughs> I got to write in the script. My song of the week <laughs> is like a movie by Labyrinth. <laughs> Oh. Uh, my song of the week is called Building a Ladder by a Hiatus Coyote. I'm going to hope that I said that right. <laughs> I'm working on it right now. So, And my song of the week is uh, The Tango of Roxanne from the Moulin Rouge movie, specifically the Ewan McGregor version. Nice. All right. So coming up, we're going to guess that song. I have. Welcome back to Major Discussion. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Welcome back to the Mick and Nick Show. After those hard topics, let's wind down with some fun games. Today we are playing Guess That Song. Yes. Michelle, how do we play this game? So to play this game, 
Um, it will be me and Molly versus you and Megan. We will take turns showing the other team a song lyric we picked out, and you guys will just have to guess a song. The theme is Disney songs. And um, we will do five rounds of this, or whenever we would have to end. Um, and the winner gets bragging rights. So, <laughs> yeah. Serious. <laughs> well, I'll start off with mine first. So, for me, the lyrics are, when the wind's from the east and the sun's from the west and the sand in the glass is right, come on down, stop on by. Oh, wait, I know this one. <laughs> That's um, oh, wow. Is it? Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's not from Belle, is it? No, it's not. Or, it's I mean, for you. I'll give you. Come on and stop on by. Stop on by. Stop on by where? <laughs> yeah. To the Disney movie. It's yeah. a Disney movie. Yeah. I'll give you guys five more seconds. Can we get oh. a hint? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want the movie name? Sure. Aladdin. Oh, that makes sense. Um, Arabian oh. Nights. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I don't love Aladdin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What's the next next song? Alrighty. Let's get down oh, to Mulan. business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Let's get down to business. To defeat the Huns, did they send me daughters when I asked for sons? I'm so sorry. Jump no, the gun well, there. What's the song? It's um. Uh, I'll make a man. I'll make a man. You, you did that back in. I started school. off easy, so you're good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give them the win. Okay, so next one is. There's a little pop up. There it is. Again, you're gone, off on a different path than mine. I'm left <laughs> behind, wondering if I sh should follow you. Had to go. And of course, it's always fine. I probably could catch up with you tomorrow. Now I know you're marching north because I am lost in the woods. Yep. That was oh, so bad. it's from um, Into the oh, Woods. Fro Frozen 2. Oh, Frozen 2. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I'm so bad with you. Oh, no. oh, what wrong. was the song song name? Um, lost it's in, in the Woods. Oh, Lost in yes. the Woods. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. Next one. Next song we have. And at last I see the light, and it's like the fog has lifted, and at last I see the light, and it's like the sky is new. Tangled. Tangled. Mm -hmm. At last I, I see, see the, the light. light. <laughs> yes, yes. Next see up we have, you. where does it say you gotta live and die here? Where does it say a guy can't catch a break? Why should you only take what you've been given? Why should you spend your whole life living trapped where there ain't no future? That's not, is that? It's from a musical. <laughs> a musical? A musical, a Disney musical. It's not High School Musical. No. no. Oh, it's uh, like an actual musical, yes. like a Broadway musical. Um, it has um, Jeremy to, Jordan. Yes, Jeremy Jordan. Lead. Oh wait. And, um, <laughs> it's wait Jeremy Jordan. Jeremy Jordan. Catherine. He was in, he was in something. Was, something. He was in Newsies. You have Newsies. That so, is from Newsies. Yeah. yeah. What song from Newsies? Oh, is it like Now's the Time to Do the no. no. I'm so sorry to oh every musical goodness. person out there ever. I it is. I did the musical. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Or like I watched it at least. It's, uh, um, it's a place. Yeah. Oh, oh I mean, um, the no. I guess it's not really nice high notes. Yeah, yeah Santa that nice high notes. <laughs> Santa Fe. Okay, okay. I'm losing my voice. So yeah. that's <laughs> <laughs> you did well. Okay, what's uh, what's the next song? Okay, yeah. Is there? Yep. Well, it goes to St. Louis, down to Missouri. Oklahoma City looks oh so pretty. Is this Princess and the Frog? Is it from? No. I don't think so. Wait. Wait. Wait, what, what, what movie is it from? You were right on the movie. I was oh, right from Princess 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 Princess. Princess. Is that the opening? Oh, is it song? almost there? Yes. Oh, it is. Yes. yes. Uh, They're winning. <laughs> 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 yeah, I did it it's too. Okay. Easy. <laughs> it's okay. What's the next one? <laughs> okay, I gotta say what's on my mind. Something about us doesn't seem right these days. Life keeps getting in the way. Whenever we try, oh. somehow the plan. <laughs> Is always rearranged. It's just, I got to move on and be who I am. Why do you have to go? <laughs> uh, I gotta go my own way. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's, from? what's the name of it? Gotta go my own yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you always said that. That's how I too. Nice. Uh, but what about us? Yeah. <laughs> what about us? <laughs> what about trust? <laughs> and I think we have one more, right? No, you have one more. Yeah, so I have one sex. more. For even if I'm far away, I hold oh. you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you. Each night we are apart. Remember me oh, from Coco. So good. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Made me sob. Mm -hmm. oh, Absolutely I love sob. that movie. So Watched it like three times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have one more, right? I think we have two more. Actually. I think we have I, one, I have one, one more. Yeah. yeah, we do. 
So mine is, I believe we all have a soulmate, soulmate, the chance for a perfect duet. I believe in hopeless devotion. I just haven't found it yet. But in my mind, I see the chick who is meant for me. She'll be someone who is lovely, someone wonderful and true. Molly's ready. The category that makes you smile even when you're feeling blue. Mrs. B from Teen Beach Movie. I'm nice. in movie. Love oh, the song. I know, I know she's out there. Didn't they make a, a <laughs> <laughs> Did they make a second one? Yeah, oh, they yeah. did. Okay. It's, not talk good. About it's not good. Oh, well, <laughs> no. oh sorry. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Kind of like Bruno, you know. Yeah. <laughs> What's the last one? Next song. This old town can slow you down. People taking the easy way, but I know exactly where I'm going. I'm getting closer and closer every day. Cause I'm almost, almost there. there. Yeah. Yes. From Princess and the Frog. Yes. Yes. Mm, way too easy one. I, I feel wow. like. Did we <laughs> repeat one? I think we might have. Well, no, because no. the last song was the Oklahoma City one. Yeah, was but wasn't yeah. the Oklahoma no, City yeah, one the from the opening song of Princess and the Frog? I don't. Think no. Oh, wait. Can you br can you guys bring up that graphic again? The I one after that. the Oklahoma City one. I think it was. Um, oh yeah. What, what was? What was I the think song? it it um, was not it was almost there. Orleans. It was the other one. So really, down in New Orleans. No, it's it was Route 66, 66 for cars. Oh. I was like, you didn't know. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I gave you guys a hint for the future, so yes. It's okay. I don't know the backing <laughs> score for cars. Not. I don't know. <laughs> get the point since you told us we were dying. Yeah, you know, I, so basically. That's th fine. You guys are still winning. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay. I guess that's all for that's the, we're the winners. Bragging rights. Yeah. Bragging rights. Let's, let's go. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. We went to Italy. Yeah, we did. <laughs> what did you guys do over spring break? I went to over, um, NESC, but that Love was a fun it. time. I stayed here in Oswego. I did homework, and I slept, and I ate a quesadilla. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's all we have for today, folks. If you need help, any help, feel free to call the number for um, counseling services at Mary Walker. Can you tune in next time to the Mick and Nick Show. Welcome to Season 6, Episode 6 of Stick to Sports. I'm Brian Burrows. And I'm Ben Diamond. Today, we take a look at some su surprising MLB starts and the NBA playoffs. Roll it! The Oakland, Oakland A's have turned things around. Following a slow start to the season, they were 1-7. They've gone on a hot stretch of winning six of their last nine games and winning three straight series, beating the Tigers, Rangers, and most recently, recently the Nationals. A mix of veteran pitching and young hitters has started to change the narrative on this Oakland team from easy walkover to potential challenge. They're coming up on a stretch of harder opponents, though, with the Guardians, Yankees, and Orioles all to play before the end of the month. Has Oakland become an actual challenge to big league teams, or is this just a quick stretch of decent play? I mean, right now you could say maybe it is just a stretch of decent play for this, this Athletics team, but they took a series from the defending champ De Texas Rangers. That's nothing to sniff at, because their lineup might even be better than it was last season. But also their young players right now having a lot more experience in the MLB. They're coming to their second or third seasons, giving them a little more seasoning, and you know maybe that they become more comfortable but there's still a lot of dysfunction in the organization as a whole. So if they're able to block out that noise, maybe they can become more of a formidable foe to, you know, some of the, to the rest of the MLB than they have been in the last few years, but we'll have to wait and see if this stretch can continue. Yeah, I think this is very much just like a quick stretch. I mean, the Rangers thing is no small feat, but the Nationals are easy. The Tigers aren't the best team out there. This next stretch of games is really going to be the, the litmus test for them. Um, it's nice to see, though, that they aren't just a, tr a glorified AAA team right now, even though they'll be playing in a AAA park in a couple of seasons, or next season. But the nice, I think you mentioned that the young hitters, Shea Longolier is coming into his own, has been really nice to see the, the big piece of that Sean Murphy trade a couple of years back. And Mason Miller has looked absolutely gross. He throws consistently over 100. He was hitting like 104 the other night, which has been really cool to see. So they have some young players that are still going to be fun to watch, give people a reason to watch this Oakland team, even though no one's going to be in the stadium for them. The Kansas City Royals have gotten off to a hot start at 11-6 after finishing last season with an abysmal 56-106 record. With shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. taking another step forward to start the 2024 season and great results from Cole Reagans and the rest of the starting rotation, the Royals look to be in a better spot than they were last year. Do you think the Royals can keep up this play consistently throughout the season, Brian? 
I think this is very much sustainable for this Royal squad. The front office did an excellent job this offseason going out and getting um, veterans to surround their young core. They brought in Michael Walker, Hunter Renfro, and um, Seth Lugo, among other veterans, to just kind of solidify your team. That's what you want to do when you have a young core, and none of them are on massive contracts. So it's not going to eat up the, any of the money for a long term, but it's a great way to... Uh, just like build around your team and give your young players some support. Bobby Witt has been a monster. You mentioned him. He's got a, over a, a thousand OPS. Salvador Perez is still playing at a good rate for now. Is more pretty much a DH. And Brady Singer and Cole Reagans have looked very good at the top of the rotation. I'm very excited to see what Cole Reagans can be for this Royals team in a year or two. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I feel like the entire season really hinges on the pitching staff because, as you said, they brought in guys like Seth Lugo, like Michael Waka, these veteran guys that, you know, kind of, you know, middle, middle table pitchers in the MLB. But they can be serviceable, and they've shown that so far, you know, being really, really consistent. I have a little bit of shaky starts, but not too bad to the point where they're absolutely getting blown out. And then this offense has the offensive pieces that they, you know, they can score runs. They just need to consistently. Bobby Wood Jr. is going to be at the center of that. And I know if he's on, this lineup will be firing all cylinders. The Chicago Cubs have had a solid start to the season, going 9-6 with series wins over the Dodgers, Rockies, and now the Mariners. New signing, signing Shoto Imanaga is yet to give up an earned run in his first three starts, and Michael Bush has hit home runs in four straight games. Say Suzuki, who was hitting over 300 in the first 15 games, just got put on the 15-day IL, though, with an oblique strain. Will losing Suzuki cause the Cubs to cool off, or will they be fine for the time being? I mean, it's a brutal loss for the Cubs. I mean, Suzuki's been fantastic to start the season, but I think the loss hurts the most if guys like Cody Bellinger, guys like Danby Swanson don't start to show up. Right now, at the start of the season, I know he didn't have a lot of spring training because of the long uh, free agent holdout, but Cody Bellinger currently batting 172 on the season, and if he's supposed to be your top guy in the middle of the lineup, and he's only hitting 172, your lineup's not going to do anything. So if he's able to pick it up in Suzuki's absence, absolutely, this, the, I don't think the loss is going to be that bad. But Dansby Swanson as well, Nico Horner, two, two other guys that really need to step it up in the lineup if they don't want this absence to hurt as much as it will. Yeah, they have a tough series right now against the Diamondbacks. It's going to be tough with the reigning NL champs. But then they get Miami, Houston, Boston, and the New York Mets. F four squads that are not... The best teams in baseball. I mean, Miami's really struggling. Houston's had a rough start of the season. Boston's up and down, and so, so have been the Mets. They're also in a relatively weak division in the NL Central. So a, a very uh, easy stretch right now where they, even they say sit 500 until Suzuki comes back could uh, very easily lead them going farther once he is back and be a big bat in the lineup. They also called up Alexander Canario, who played well in his six games last year with a 240, 294 average, a double, triple, and a home run. The Pittsburgh Pirates have surprised fans once again this season, starting the 2024 campaign at 11-5. Although it looks as though this, might, this may be a breakthrough for the team that finished fourth in the NL Central in 2023, they did, not ha they did have a similar start to the season last year before falling back to earth. Brian, can this Pirates team consistently raise the Jolly Roger, or are they bound for the same fate as last year? I'm going to lean right now towards same fate as last year. Unlike the Cubs, they really don't have that star power. Key, star power. Key Ryan Hayes and O'Neill Cruz are great, and so was and Brian Reynolds really is a kind of the top of their team. Besides that, it's not great, and those some, some of those guys are still kind of coming up and not really coming into their own quite yet. They only have two players currently hitting over 280. Their best pitchers right now are Martin Perez and Marco Gonzalez, as far as ERA is concerned. You can't rely on two of those veterans who have consistently shown in their careers that they're not top of the rotation guys. They're going to need players like Jared Jones and Mitch Keller, who both have ERAs over four early in the season, which is... Not too much of a worry, but can be if they don't turn it around. And then it's been what the most concerning thing, I think, for them has been David Bednar. Really good closer, but has been shaky. His three blown saves in his first five attempts. If they're going to try and win games and close it out in a competitive NL Central, they're going to need him to be able to lock down. Absolutely. And, I mean, you mentioned that core. Key Brian Hayes, O'Neill Cruz, Brian Reynolds. They have depth pieces right now that are picking up the slack. Connor Joe has had a fantastic April and March. Uh, Michael A. Taylor also, towards the top and bottom of the lineup, wherever he's placed, he's been fantastic for them so far. But as you mentioned, if you can't rely on, on Bednar at the back of the, of, of the bullpen and you're going to you know, kind of be scrambling to find ways to close games, it's going to be a little bit hectic for this Pirates team going forward. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the 2024 NBA playoff picture here on WTOP 10. Would you like to try snacks from faraway lands? Or snacks with bizarre flavors? How about snacks in new ways? Or snacks you've never tried before? 
You don't have to go far to find these snacks. They can all be found here, at Snacks, on West First Street. Yeah, we're walking around campus, and what do we see? All these clubs are looking, they're looking for me. There's hockey, there's improv, so much to see. So let's go try them out and see how they be. Come on and please watch our embarrassments free. Tune in to Amateurs on WTOP. Happy Friday, Lakers, and another beautiful day here in Oswego, New York. I'm DJ Don Perone, and I'm happy that you're starting your weekend off right listening to WNYO 88.9 FM, the Laser Radio Network. I said, darling, can you see? There's no room for us. There's no room. Back to Stick to Sports. In the Eastern Conference play in the eight seeded Heat will head to Philly for the chance to play the Knicks. Winner of the Bulls and Hawks will take on the loser of the 7 8 game, and the winner of that heads to Boston. Ben, who's making it through to the play in and through into the full playoffs? Ultimately, I don't think it's that tough of a decision, for, especially in the East. I think the West is a little more of a toss up, but the East right now, I think ultimately the Sixers are going to win this first game against the Heat. But then the Heat's going to roll over whoever is the winner of that 9-10 game versus the Hawks and the Bulls. Neither of those teams in the 9-10 are particularly eye-popping when it comes to you know, the rest of the playoff teams. I think when you get into the, into the West, uh, the, the playing teams are a little bit more polished than the ones in the East. But ultimately, I think coming away with this, I mean, 76ers game back in bead. He, they're, they're, they're a team that could be a four. They could be a three seed. But, of course, with him being out for two months, they fell all the way down, and now they're in the play-in. I think they'll have no issue getting out of the play-in and into the full playoff. And the Heat, they always end up turning it up in the, in the playoffs. And I think the play-in is no different. They had the same issue last year, and they ended up making it to the NBA Finals. The Heat are definitely going to be that eight seed coming out of the play-in. Yeah, I fully agree with you. The 76ers are definitely going to be the team that they head into New York. I think the Heat are headed to Boston. And it's going to be a really interesting playoffs all the way through the East. We'll look into the other matchups right, pretty soon. In the Western Conference, we are set up to see the 7-seed Pelicans take on the 8-seed Lakers and the 9-seed Kings take on the 10-seed Warriors. Brian, how do you think these matchups will shake out and who will take the final two spots in the West? First things first, I think you're looking at the Lake, the Lakers taking down the Pelicans in that first game. I think playoff LeBron in a one-game series is just too much. That Lakers team is built well enough to take down this Pelicans squad in that first game, and I just don't think LeBron is going to lose a play-in game. He's going he's gonna to push, he's going to try to make it uh, into the full playoffs. From, where, from there, who knows, but in, he's not losing the plan. Uh, then I do think it's going to be the Kings taking down the Warriors and the Kings also making it through. Uh, I just think they have enough offensive firepower between De'Aaron Fox, Devonta Sabonis, uh, and just to push through and beat the Warriors, who are just kind of middling right now with their stars aging. I mean, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I know the Warriors are aging. I think the Lakers still get through, as, as you said, but the Warriors are aging, but they have that experience. And so far this season, the Kings have not been as good as they were last year, and I think that's going to be very important because these two teams did face off against each other in the playoffs last year. I think the Warriors are the better team in this matchup. And then when it comes to the Pelicans you know, playing in that 7-10 uh, uh, game, I think that the experience and just you know, the greatness of Steph Curry probably will shine through there and send them into the playoffs. The Suns and Timberwolves will face off in the first round of the West playoffs. The Suns underachieved this year after high hopes within, with Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker. The Timberwolves, led by Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, shocked the league, finishing in third in the West but had a shot for the one seed on the final day. How is this series playing out and which squad is moving on? I think this is a really interesting matchup the, between the Suns and the Timberwolves. I mean, Timberwolves have done fantastic in the Western Conference against Western Conference opponents. I believe they were 37-15 and 15 this season. 
but still they fell to that third seed and it's really really intriguing because this this team is pretty well built a lot of great depth and a lot of great guys at the top as you said Anthony Edwards Carl Anthony Towns Rudy Gobert just a lot of going there, but I don't think that they can get past Suns. I think it'll be a great matchup, but I think the Suns take it. Yeah, I'm right with you. Giving the Suns the offensive firepower from the is just there. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, all of them can go off for a 50 point night, and just to have the ability to lean on one of them and every every different game, like every single game differently, will help. Uh, the Wolves are young and they're inexperienced. I think Rudy Gobert, his defensive prowess is huge, but there's no one really for him on the Suns to shut down. The Mavericks and the Clippers are set to square off in a tightly contested matchup in the first round of the NBA playoffs. The Clippers finished the regular season with a record of 51-31, one game ahead of the 50-32 Mavericks. The Clippers and Clippers trio of Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, and Paul George are looking to take down the duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. But late season injuries seem to be creeping into the Clippers roster. How will this first series go for either team, Ryan? I really like the Clippers in this series. I think just you look at the matchup, the way the teams match up, and I think the Clippers, the Clippers have it. You're going to probably see Kawhi taking on Luka, and it's going to be a great matchup, great score versus a great defender. But then even when Kawhi's off the floor, PG can slide in. He's also a great defender. I think they're going to have a good time shutting down Luka and kind of forcing them to rely on their other scorers. And then Kyrie is going to have to step up other players. And I think the Clippers, similar to the Clippers, have the offensive power. But even going deeper, deeper into the bench, the defense for the Clippers will just be there. You know, ultimately, I think this probably might be the closest matchup of all the first-round matchups. But I think it's going to depend on the health of the Clippers. If the Clippers are not fully healthy, even if they play, like Kawhi Leonard, if he plays but he's still coming off an injury, I think the Mavericks are able to go and take advantage of that and take the series. The Indiana Pacers finished with the sixth seed in the East and are headed to Milwaukee for an in-division first-round matchup. Tyrese Halliburton and deadline edition Pascal Siakam had the Pacers leading the league in points per game. The Milwaukee Bucks finished with the th three seed, but switched coaches midseason to Doc Rivers, who only went 17-19 and 19 at the helm. Which of these Central Division squads is headed to the second round? I mean, the Bucks are clearly the more experienced team when it comes to the playoffs, but They've not played the way that you'd expect them to under Doc Rivers, and I think that's going to play a huge factor in this game. And e even with the, all the experience that Doc Rivers has in the playoffs, that the Bucks have in the playoffs, and I think the Pacers could be a sneaky team to get that upset in the first round, and it's going to be really fun to watch and see what Tyrese Halliburton does and how he performs in the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. Tyrese Halliburton could very much lead this team scoring-wise. And then they brought in Pascal Siakam, who's been to the NBA Finals, who's won an NBA championship with the Raptors as that second piece and the, the veteran leader for the squad. The offense is obviously just so explosive, leading the league in points. And then they're gonna, the Bucks are just going to need Damian Lillard to go off. They're going to need multiple scorers besides just Giannis. Dame cannot go cold if they want to win. But I think this, the Pacers are going to be the upset of the first round in the entire playoffs. The number four seed and number five seed matchup in the East will also be a tightly contested affair. The Magic are looking to put themselves on the map with a series victory over the Cavs, while Cleveland looks to bounce back from their first round exit last season. Brian, what do you expect from both of these teams in this matchup? Look, it was a great season from the Magic, but they're young and they just don't have a lot of playoff experience. They really don't have that veteran leader. Uh, on the other side, for the Cavs, Mitchell and Garland are just such a dynamic duo. Evan Mobley will most likely be able to shut down Paolo Banchero through the entire series. And then uh, Bickerstaff is coaching for his job. I think a lot of buzz around the league is that he, if they don't go far in this playoffs, he's probably going to be out as head coach of the Cavs. So I think he'll step it up too and just kind of game plan really well. The Cavs also have great bench scoring. So I just think the Cavs overall, the better squad here, are going to move on to the next round. I mean, the Cavs have the experience. I think experience is so important, so important when it comes to these playoffs, and especially against the young team. But the Cavaliers have struggled a lot against playoff teams throughout the entire season. A lot of those long stretches where they were beating a lot of teams, a lot of winning streaks, they were beating not play teams that aren't necessarily in the playoffs, so playing teams or non-playoff teams. So I'm not as impressed, and I think the Magic could actually take this one. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Brian will be joined by one of our producers, Alex Brooks, here on WTOP10.
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roger, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching WTOP. <laughs> Welcome back to Sick to Sports. Joining me now is Alex Brooks, one of our producers. Alex, what do you have for us tonight? Thank you, Brian. Let's continue our conversation with the NBA playoffs as the play-in games start tomorrow night. We know teams like the Suns, Knicks, and Celtics are heavily favored for a deep run. But Brian, I ask you this. Who is your fast-break NBA dark horse playoff team? Um, I said I'm talking about that earlier, but I, I really like the Clippers right now. I know Ben had mentioned those injuries that they're kind of dealing with or no, but you, the, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden all bring a lot of playoff experience, which is great from their, top, their three leaders. Kawhi is just such an excellent defender. He'll take, he'll take away that top score for most of the game when he's on the floor. They were 12th, you see on the full screen, 12th in points per game. Offensively, 10th in defensive points per game. They're just such a well-rounded team. They bring in bench scoring like Norman Powell and Russell Westbrook usually coming off the bench for this team as well. They're just a lot of good pieces all on this team that can kind of make impacts and the defense is there which I think is huge I mean defense wins championships that's the moniker it, it it's real yeah it, it really is real and my dark horse candidate is the Philadelphia 76ers you were talking about playoff experience with James Harden Paul George you also got experience with the uh, reigning MVP Joel Embiid if he's healthy he Tyrese Maxey Tobias Harris those are the top players for the 76ers I mean they they're doing really well right now as you see with the full screen they're 12th in points per game and I mean they are doing really well right now and it just seems like for the Sixers they contend every single year they just can't get to the conference finals Let's move to the diamond now as the homegrown stories are always a good conversation to have in sports. A lot of buzz surrounded Jackson Holiday of the Baltimore Orioles as he made his MLB debut last week. Brian, he recorded his first MLB hit last night, so I ask you, what do you predict Jackson Holiday's career will look like? I mean, I'm, I think we're looking at a multiple-time All-Star. He's going to be a staple in this Orioles lineup for the next, I don't know how many years, especially with the new ownership. They're going to pay him. He'll get that contract as long as he proves himself. He rocketed through the minors. He played amazing in that short stint in AAA he had this year. He's shown... But he is right now with kind of just getting that first hit a few games into his season, showing the true gap between a AAA pitcher and the MLB pitchers. I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for him. But once he figures it out, I expect him to be kind of a 20 homer, 30 stolen base guy, even more with the new rules on the stolen bases, honestly, hitting around 300 with a high on base, prototypical one to two hitter. He's going to be a staple right in front of Adley and Gunner for this lineup for years to come. It's going to be so scary, this Orioles team with Jackson Holiday. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting, Brian. I mean, Jackson Holiday, I feel like he's going to be that five tool player. I mean, I feel like he's going to be that one who's going to be leading off and he's also just going to make uh, impacts for the Orioles. I see this Orioles team, as you were mentioning, with Holiday, Gunner Henderson, and Adley Rutschman. I feel like they're kind of like that super team that Houston Astros had, the homegrown teams with Correa, uh, uh, Altuve and Bregman. Moving to another homegrown story as the struggling 6-10 Seattle Mariners called up number 10 prospect Jonathan Class A from AAA to make his MLB debut tonight against the Reds. This move was made to try to add a spark to an underperforming Seattle squad. Brian, will the young speedster give the M's some flair in the Emerald City? Yeah, so he's, I think he will. He's being called up to replace um, Dominic Canzone, who was injured yesterday running into the uh, outfield wall trying to make a catch. Um, it's 
the speed, you mentioned it. You see it on the full screen there. 79 stolen bases in 94 attempts. That's a ridiculous number last year. The M's need a speed guy. They only have five stolen bases this season, three coming from Julio Rodriguez and two coming from Dylan Moore. They're going to need some more speed on the base path. It's coming, becoming a part of the game again. Uh, it's going to give Luke Rayleigh some more playing time, the guy they got from the Rays in the offseason as well, who I think will make a little bit of an impact. But Class A hitting 311 in the, in the minors this season with over 1,000 OPS in the 12 games. If he develops, I think he could be a top of the lineup type guy, a like leadoff hitter, just like Jackson Holiday. Yeah, I agree. I mean, when you get your opportunity to the majors, you better take it. I mean, he's a really a big speedster. He's going to get that stolen bases, 311 average in 12 games. This Seattle team needs that spark plug, a speed guy who can help you out down the stretch. We're going to take a quick break here in Sick to Sports. Thanks, thanks once again to Alex for the fast break. When we come back, Ben, Alex, and I will head into extra innings. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Sick to Sports on WTOP 10. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. <laughs> On that, but Look that at the boy. bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. Yeah. Yep. 10 out of 10 recommend on you. Yep. I'm buzzed. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. And welcome back to Stick to Sports. Now let's get ready for another edition of everyone's favorite segment, Extra Innings. Now let's take a look at the Extra Innings standings. And guys, we were all three and two. Uh, we, we were all at the same thing. We didn't pick Great the job, same guys. games. I found out earlier when I was talking to Brian, but I mean, we're three and two. I mean, it's getting a little close. I mean, I'm a little back there, but Ben, you're 17 and eight. Good wow, job I'm right impressed now. with myself. I, <laughs> I did really bad last semester, so I'm, I'm impressed. There you go, there you go. <laughs> There we go. Well, we'll start this extra inning segment with some basketball. And as Kanye said, I guess that's a feeling only me and LeBron know as LeBron James and the Lakers head to New Orleans. Thanks, Mike, to play the Pelicans. Brian, who's headed to the playoffs? Uh, I like I said it earlier. I like the, the Lakers in this one. I think their LeBron on a one in a one game playoff is going to just lead that team. He's going to take it over. Maybe even a triple double night for him. I absolutely agree, Brian. I mean, I, would, I think we both agreed earlier that the Lakers were going to take this one. I think they're simply the better team than the Pelicans. They just played yesterday. I think that they can do it again um, on Wednesday. Yeah, I agree with you both. I'm going to take the Lakers. You were mentioning earlier, Brian, that the Lakers, LeBron's not going to lose this play-in tournament. No. So let's move over to our next matchup, the number 10 Golden State Warriors versus the number 9 Kings. Ben, who we got in this one? Yeah, another game that we were just talking about before, I'm going to take the Warriors in this one. I just think that that experience that the Warriors have in the playoffs, I also think that they're just a little bit better than the Kings. doesn't mean the Kings aren't a good team, but I just don't think they have enough gas to make it through the playing tournament. 
Uh, I personally like the Kings in this one. I think offensive star power, offensive firepower that they have with De'Aaron Fox is going to be huge, and Draymond Green is going to pull some shenanigans and get his kick out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe so, but I'm going to go with the experience on this one, so I'm going to agree with you, Ben. Uh, number 10 Warriors are going to take this one. We're going to move over to the Miami Heat versus the number 7 76ers, number 8 Heat versus 76ers. Sixers are favored at 4.5. Brian, who we got? Uh, give me the 76ers in this one. Joel Embiid is going to go off. He's uh, coming. He came back from injury. He's looked pretty good. The Sixers are going to lead this team. They were, like you said earlier, they should have been like a four seed in this turn, four seed this year. Absolutely. I mean, if, if if not for Joel Embiid being out for two months, the 76ers team is one of the best in the Eastern Conference. So I see no reason as to why they can't win this first game in the playing tournament. And honestly, if they don't, they're going to win the next one. So they will be in the playoffs no matter what. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the 76ers on this one. I talked about it in C-Block, so I am definitely going to ride high with Philly. So we'll move over to our next matchup, number 10 Atlanta Hawks versus the number 9 Chicago Bulls. Eastern Conference here. Ben, who do we got? Oh, this is this isn't a great matchup. I gotta say. I mean, the 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 Hawks. You know, they they haven't played fantastic this year, but they have that experience. The Bulls also having some experience, but this both these teams have not really lit it up that much this uh, on offense this season. I'm gonna have to take the Bulls. They've just played a little bit better against playoff teams. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Hawks. I'm a Hawks guy personally. I'm a Hawks fan. Uh, Trey Young's back. He'll do something in the playoffs. He seems to seems to pop off in the playoffs. So give me the Hawks and Trey Young. Yeah, I'm going to go with Atlanta. I'm going to go uh, go with the number 10 Hawks on this one. We're going to move over to our final matchup, some NHL here. The Capitals and Flyers are still fighting for some playoff seating. So, Brian, take us home with this last one. I'm going to be quick. Alex Ovechkin and the Capitals heading to the playoffs. Give me. I mean, I completely agree. The Flyers have been in a tailspin. I'm taking the Capitals. Yeah, three for three on the Washington Capitals here. Yeah, I mean, that was – I mean – the Flyers have been in a tailspin. You can't. Yeah, they have. Right now, they don't. They don't have a set goaltender. They got Fedotov uh, from Russia, but he has looked fantastic in his first few starts. So I don't really have much trust in him against the Capitals. No, so. yeah, Capitals definitely. Oh, Veshkin. But that's all the time we have on this episode of Sick to Sports. Be sure to tune in next week right here on WTOP10. Welcome to the Mick and Nick Show. It's great to have you join us. Nick, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk, give you guys kind of a set tour and then slide right into real talk with coloring pages and end up with a fun let's play of us playing Overcooked 2. So excited. That was also a really cool intro. I wonder who edited that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so let's start with our set tour. All right. So we got our butterfly chairs here. Yep. This one's from Target. This one is from Amazon, but it's a Walmart brand, so... I don't know, I'll let them beef it out by themselves. And then we have this really nice, you know, table in the middle. Also from Walmart. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll start with the little plushies here. So this is Joey. She's a kangaroo, made her myself. Over here is Paula, you know, she's also a koala, not a kangaroo, but Auss Aussie. Um, and I also made her, and we made her at actually the same event. It was one of those fun ones that kept on campus. We did go together. That was fun. Yes, it was. There was fluff everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, and over here, we have um, my salt lamp right here. Haven't licked it yet. No one has licked it yet. I don't know if anyone will lick it yet. I might at some point. Maybe. There's something fun though, where your water was dripping on it and she it had this was. salt pool all over <laughs> yeah, her table. From that the was great. Air conditioning. It was, yeah. I would have a little salt pool on my little nightstand. 
It was great. And then over here I have a little um, penguin. It's from the Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut. Um, I went there this past summer with my um, family. It was fun. I haven't been in an aquarium in a long time, but it was nice. And I got this because the penguins were really cute up there. <laughs> yes, it was. Oh, love the set. All right, Nick, what is up for WTOP? Yeah, so this week on WTOP, um, Pokemon fans have finally gotten their feeling of content due to the recent Pokemon Direct.